Hi guys, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. So in the last video, we have done with our create operation. Now in this video, we will learn about read operation. So for our application, the application that we are creating, we need two kind of read operation. The first read operation when the user will log in. User is registered. Now user wants to log in. And the second kind of read operation is when we want to fetch the list of all the registered user. So this is what we are going to learn in this video. So the first thing that we need is we need a user login option. So when the user will try to log in, there is three possibilities. So again, we will define the constants for every possibility. The first possibility is user authenticated successfully. Let's make it 201. User not found. The email that user entered while login in is not exist in the database. Okay, so this is for this case. And the last option is user not authenticated or password do not match let's make it 203 and let's put the user as a prefix so we have three constants when the user is authenticated successfully when the user do not exist in our database when the user password do not match now Save this file and come back to DB operations. Now here we will create one more method. Public function user login. And when the user wants to login, user needs to provide email and password. Email password. Now we will check if there is a user with this email that is given and to do this again we can use the same method that we created in the last video is email accessed so we will write if this is email accessed we will pass the email if email is in our database that means user has given the correct email else we will return this constant user not found so return user not found if email already exists we will get the detail of the user so uh, we will create one more function here and it is private function get user by email and again we will pass email to this function now here we will create an statement so the same method but this time we need a select query and actually the same query so we have select id and we will select email password and email password name and school so we will select all the columns from the database and where email equals to question mark so we need to bind the parameters so let's do it bind param and we have only a single string to bind and that is email now we will execute the query and we will bind the result and we have id email password name school so we have binded all the result with the statement now we can fetch the values and to do this first we need to call the fetch method and then we can create a user and we can put all the values
actually this time we will not read all the values but we will read only the password so and we also need this method so for now I will comment this and I will paste it here and I will change the name to get users password by email so for now we just need the password to verify whether the user has entered the correct password or not so we will write select password from users select password from users where email equals to question mark then we will bind the parameter then we will execute and then we will bind the result this time we have only a single result which is password fine and finally we will return password now here we will verify if password underscore verify so we have a method to verify the password we are doing it because we have stored the password in hashed format you can see it here the password is hashed so we need to verify it and we cannot directly compare it using an equals to operator okay so that is why we have a password underscore verify method in PHP it is embed and it takes two parameters the first parameter is the password so we will get the password from this function so let's call it so we have password fine and for the first parameter we can pass the password that is entered oops let's name it hashed password so we have the hashed password that is stored in the database and we have this password that the user has entered now we need to verify the password entered is correct or not so this method password verify takes two parameters the first parameter is the password so we have the password that the user has entered and the next parameter is the hashed password. Now this function will return true if the password is correct and it will return false if the password is not correct. So if the password is correct we will return user authenticated and if the password is not correct we will return password do not match. fine so this is our user login function now let's code or complete this method as well so when the user is authenticated we will read the user values by using this method and this time we do not need to read the password so we will read id name email and school only where email equals to question mark so remove the password from here we need id email name school only this time we fetch the value and we are putting all the values inside this user array so let's do it name school and finally return the user so we have done with the read operations now we need to make the api call for this and we need to make this function public so we have get user by email that will return the user and we have user login that will authenticate the user now let's create another call and again uh, we will use a post method for this okay because it is a login operation so we will create app post user login next parameter is a function which takes request and response 
now for user login we need email and password so we will write if has have empty parameters so we will pass here an array we need email and password which should not be empty in the request then we will pass the response object and we will put a not here to confirm we don't have email and password empty in the request here we will do the same thing we will return the error code fine now come inside and get the email and password from the request so we will create a variable request data or we can simply copy the same thing that we have written in the last video so copy these things and paste it here so we have request data and we got the email and password from the request now what we will do we will call the function user login and for this again we need a new db operation object fine now from this db object we will call user login so again we need a result equals to db user login and we will pass email and password then we will check if result equal to equal to we have the constant user authenticated else if result equal to equal to we have user not found and the last one is password to not match fine we have three cases now when the user is authenticated we will get the user from the database so we will create a variable and we will get the user from the database by calling this function and we will pass email so we have the user now we will create a response or result we already have the result so what I can give the variable name let's make it response data equals to array and we will do the same thing response error equals to false we don't have any error for the message we can write login successful or whatever you want and for the last attribute or key we can return the user actually the user data which we have in this user object fine finally we can write oops it is not response but response data so sometimes you write wrong thing and you didn't notice so make sure you are writing the right thing okay now we will use the response object to write the output in json format so again we will use the json encode and we will pass the response data and we will return response or let's copy it and paste it here so with header application json and we will return code 200 that means ok and if the user not found again we will do the same thing so copy it and this time error is true user not exist and we don't have the user this time and rest of the thing is same and we can return a 404 that means not found or let's make it 200
you can use whatever code you want okay and same thing i will do here as well error is true and the error message is invalid credential and everything is perfect now we can try this url as well so let's try user login delete all the parameters now let's send a post request so what we are getting error true required parameters email password are missing or empty so let's pass email and let's pass password and let's give a wrong password send the request and we are getting some error so by default slim do not displays the actual error so what we need to do is we need to set some configuration for our slim app so here we will write settings display error details and we will make it to true now let's run it again and you can see it is giving us the actual error syntax error unexpected end of file in constants.php so let's check the file constants.php and i just forget to put a semicolon here now let's try again now we have an error call to undefined function get users password by email so let's check it the line number is 28 so 28 so this is the function oh we cannot directly call the function inside a class we have to use this and then the arrow operator now let's try again and we are getting the actual message invalid credential now if i will pass the real password or correct password then we are getting error false login successful and we have the user data so it is working very fine guys so that is all for this video friends i hope you found it helpful if you did then please hit on the like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and if you have any kind of question please leave that in the comment section so that's all for this video guys this is bilal khan signing off